Hey guys, it's Sensei George here. For today's video, we're going to be sharing footage that we shot for the United States Nippo Academy's curriculum for rolls and breakfalls. If you want to check out more material from the United States Nippo Academy, the link is in the description below. Check them out. Now for the video. Okay guys, this is Sensei George from the United States Nippo Academy. And something that I'm going over for you today are the systems of rolls and breakfalls that we have in our curriculum. So you guys can get some insight of its practical usage in the dojo and outside in your day-to-day -day life. So first, I'm gonna go through our series of rolls and breakfalls that we have so you can properly apply them. First, we have Zimpo Ukemi, the art of falling forward as to not hurt yourself. So we're in a standard position and... So in that technique, what we're doing is we're creating a gap so that I don't fall and bust my kneecap on the ground and I kick the guy that was likely to have pushed me over. From here, I support myself, stand up and then kick so that I can train to attack the person in front of me, clear my area, make sure there's no one here, and go into stance. Next we have Koho Ukemi, the art of falling backwards. The most important part of this lesson is to tuck your chin to prevent your head from hitting the pavement, so that way you're not gonna get a concussion or cause your, any brain swelling. So from this position here, I'm gonna jump back, breathe out, get up, and be prepared for combat again. So again, the most important part of this is to tuck your chin. As you're falling back, you have to train to jump up. If you just roll, you're not training break falls. Notice how my body comes from up and then out. So I land on my back. I breathe out and I hold my foot and make sure that I can prevent someone from coming in at me. Be prepared to kick, stand up, stance. That's Koho Ukemi. Now we have Yoko Ukemi, the art of falling while sideways. So the way to practice this is standing in Shizen, our natural stance. And then what we do is we twist our body and we practice falling sideways. Same way of getting up, same way of everything else. Tuck your chin, make sure that your body is being lowered by this leg, fall, get up properly. So now we're gonna go into our systems of rolls. The first roll that we have is Zimpo Kitan, which is our forward roll and how we choose to attack. So Zimpo Kitan is not just a way of rolling from an attack, but how to deal and take damage. If someone were to strike me in my neck, if I roll with it, I'll be deducting the damage that I would have taken normally. And I can also use this to escape a fight. If someone squares up with me, or they try to attack at me, and I duck, and then I roll away, look how much distance I got away from that person, and I can now hop over obstacles, get away, and not even have to worry about this person getting me. So that's the importance of Zippo Kitan. I lower myself down, my hands are on the, on the inside of my leg, I make a pyramid here, I tuck my chin to my opposite shoulder, and then I roll from shoulder to hip. So as I lower myself down, I tuck everything. The lower I am to the ground, the easier and smoother my roll is. So it's very important that you keep your body tight. And one other principle that I have in every single roll that is best to learn now is the number four principle. If you see this, my leg makes the number four. So anytime I go to roll, right here, my number four locks in and I support myself and then get up while it's there. I use that and I do a crunch in the middle of my roll to keep me really tight. So next we have Kohu Kemi, the art of rolling backwards. So while I'm facing, I drop down, roll over, push up, get back in the stance. So this is how you would deal with someone knocking you back. Most important part again, tuck your chin. So when you're falling backwards and you tuck your chin and your body's astringed out, you can naturally come back over and attack. And you'll notice one other thing about when I do this roll. When I come over, I'm in a push-up position. This is so that my leg can come through. I can again attack from this posture. It's not just getting up. It's getting up, being aware, and being able to counterattack if you're dealing with a, uh, an opponent coming after you. Next, we have Yoko Nagre. Translated, it means side flow. So I hit your Ichimonji no Kamai, and from here, I roll sideways while maintaining eye contact the whole time. So I do Yoko uh, Ukemi, but turn it into a roll while maintaining contact on my opponent so that I can tell whether they're coming in or out. Again, this one is training you on an escape from wrist locks. If someone were to take my wrist and they start to roll it outwards, I go with it, I do Yoko Ukemi, come up and then I punch them in the face. It's very important to be able to practice flowing with your attacks just as much as countering them. If your opponent moves too fast and you're not prepared for it, expect the worst. This is how you prepare for it. The next role that we have is Junagare. Junagata is an escaping roll in which I'm looking at my opponent and I'm gonna do a forward roll behind me, but I'm gonna use this to be able to get our distance. I check, 
I gotta know what's behind me. Only fools rule, roll without looking behind them. So I check, I know it's clear. I roll, but I maintain eye contact the whole entire time. Again, look at this. Roll. My eyes never left my uke. It's very important. So then after uh, Junagare, what we have is a technique called Oten. Oten is a cartwheel. Why the heck do ninjas need to know how to cartwheel? It's very important. When ninjas do cartwheels, we do it tactically. I pull away. I tap my arm so that I prevent it from getting cut off by a sword. So someone would have a sword coming at me. I pull it back. I'm prepared. And from here, I rock my body and I jump with my legs as I cartwheel and get my distance. And then from there, we get our shuriken. We go to throw. But for here, it has a number of escapes. For instance, I have an environment right here that supports this. If someone were to come at me, I can leap back, plant my hand, know where it is, come over, and then continue to run and escape. It's very important to have that aspect behind it as well. So that is O10. Uh, one other technique that we need to include is Zimpo Tenkai. Zimpo Tenkai is the art of using your hands to do a handspring and come forward out of a forward movement attack. So in this instance, I will be moving forward, I'll handspring, I'll come into a roll and I'll be able to attack again. Now this is more of a flashy type move and it is used as a form of psychological intimidation for someone that's chasing me. If someone is having a hard time chasing me on foot and then I do a flip, they're not going to want to come in. And they know that I have the confidence to do something like that while they're under a lot of stress in the first place. So to show this motion right here, Zenpo Tenkai, I come forward, push up, forward roll stance and that is Zenpo Tenkai and we use that in forms of combat a lot it also is a, uh, another method of escape for a technique escaping our inward wrist lock when they start to take us one way we'll do a handspring off of one hand and flip around so we can come back to our feet and come out to counter so it is a higher level technique but you too can work up to it uh, later in another part of this video I'll go ahead and tell you some conditioning tips that you can do that will make you uh, able to apply these techniques in modern day situations so before I leave I have one more technique that I want to make sure I cover. It's Zenpo Kaiten Ukemi, our rolling breakfall. If you get thrown, and you will be, especially if you're working with other ninjas, you need to know this technique. So what's happening is that you're getting thrown and you know that you can roll out of it, but it has too much momentum or the circle is tight. So you got to learn how to roll and come out into the breakfall properly. And this posture here is again, just like our forward breakfall oh, for uh, Yoko Nagare, where, uh, we come out to the side and we get up facing our forward and push back up in the stance. So that is Zimpo Kaiten Ukemi. And I will say that is probably one of the techniques that I do the most about how people throw me around. If they get in front of me, they do Ippon Seonage or anything else because you're flipping first through that over the shoulder rotation. And then you tuck your chin, you tuck your body and you bring it in. One other tip is on the dojo, slapping your hand is okay. But outside on the street, when you're doing stuff with cement, one thing that you want to try to do is bring your arm in and focus on hitting on your tricep. So if I come in again, and now my tricep hits the ground, I got a nice tricep, I work out. So now I have some, uh, some shock absorption that prevents the pain from passing through. I don't hit my elbow, I hit my tricep that absorbed a lot, I'm able to get up, my body feels fresh. I didn't slap my hand too hard. When you have another person throwing you, add their momentum plus your own plus gravity, it's gonna hurt when your open uh, hand strike the pavement. So these are a lot of the techniques. Uh, next, I will be going over some of the workouts that you can do to make your rolls more efficient and your taihinjutsu more capable and applicable in the real life world. Yeah? So uh, first thing that you need to understand is that rolling takes place from your shoulder to your opposite hip. So one of the ways that I make sure that new people get that concept is I told them to plant their shoulder on the ground. This automatically tucks your chin to the opposite side. So by tucking your chin and planting it, there's no way that you can't roll over that proper line on your back. So I'll show you that again. I come down, I plant the shoulder on the inside, tucks my chin, kick my legs over, I roll. Notice it's on a straight line as well. I can keep in line with where I have to go. You can roll through obstacles, you can roll under them, as long as you understand where your body's gonna go. If I roll all zigzag all over the place and I try to roll underneath something, I'm likely to hit the pole that's supporting it. So it's very important that I uh, practice that type of drill right there. Another one is understanding calf raises. Uh, I do this motion here to develop your calf muscles because the stronger your calves are, the stronger you can jump in a roll. So in this instance right here, 
I'm facing this uh, person and I want to get away from them. So I start to do that role that we talked about called Junagare. But to do it and get my distance, if I don't jump from my calves, I'm not going to be able to maximize my distance. This is if I just roll straight down to the ground first. And then I'll show you how far I can get when I go ahead and activate my calf muscles. So I'm here looking at my guy, sit down, come back. This is about as far as I went. So now, again, I face my opponent, but this time I'm going to engage my calf muscles and jump out and reach my body. And I can get a lot further. Even when I draw back in Kamai, that adds me an extra four feet uh, distance in my escape. Now, another important part to include in this is wrists. You're going to work your wrists out a lot. And there's a few things you can do for that. Uh, one is reverse muscle ups. So what I do is like, for instance, over here, I support my weight with my wrist and I practice coming down. A muscle up is normally you're placing here and you're pushing up to get on top of a piece of uh, obstacle. But by doing this, I'm helping strengthen my wrist for a wide variety of movements, even if I hit the angles. Yeah. And this helps your wrist develop the strength and dexterity and flexibility that it needs so that when you hit the ground and your body weight's coming forward, you can support this and roll. It's very important uh, issue on rolls is that you gotta protect your wrists. If you hit that ground hard, you're likely to break your own wrist if your body weight's off. Okay, so now we're on the subject of using rolls for counters and for combat. So this is very important as well. So the first thing that I'm gonna show you guys is how to counter an over the arm throw. Almost every martial arts system has an over the arm throw referred to as Ippon Seonage. So when I come to grab him, he shoots for my arm and he starts to throw me over his hip. As he completes that motion, Go ahead and complete it. I begin to roll. I hooked his arm, rolled him over, stepped up, came, strike. So that alone is just hooking the body and allowing the roll to naturally carry your opponent over. Uh, it's best if you can try to hook his uh, other leg as well. So that is how you can counter that with Ippon Seonage and doing a roll. The other portion is saying how you can cap uh, save yourself from a wrist lock. So in this instance, he's going to grab my wrist and he's going to take it to the direction of the thumb. It's almost a yak in an outside wrist lock. So as he begins to go and do it, if I didn't pay attention, my wrist would have snapped here. Done, game. But because I am advanced and I understand what's going on, and I practice the art, I begin to roll with it, <laughs> roll over my arm, and escape it and re-engage my opponent. So this prevents my wrist from getting a spiral fracture. Very important. Do your rolls to escape proper technique. And this works for the other roll as well for uh, Uragyaku, the reverse wrist lock. All you have to do is a forward roll over the opposite shoulder. So by doing that, you're able to escape. And in an advanced technique, you can also do Oten with this, the uh, cartwheel. So if I were to get here, and he starts to go to take me over, if I can time this just right, normally I would do this and not even care about the person and then end up kicking him in the head. But I'll tell him to give me the space so that I, I, I can prevent that. While he was taking my wrist, just take one step back, uh, while he's taking my wrist and it goes out this way, I let it take me and I jump over and cartwheel, striking with both feet to the face. Pull the camera in. So that's one instance of using uh, an Oten for an escape there. And you have the Zimpo Tenkai uh, for the wrist lock escape this fashion. So if we come over, switch places. So what you're going to do is grab my hand with your right thumb over like this and then bring it over this way. While you're pushing and this lock is coming forward, normally if I'm not prepared, my face is going to go straight into the pavement. So what I'm going to do is channel that motion, put my hand down on the ground, and then as it's happening, go ahead flip over. I have his thumb. From here I'm able to get a lock and then break his wrist down into the same motion. And finish. So that's just another way of using Tai Hinjutsu, the art of escaping danger in this format in the dojo and on the street. This is Sensei George and I hope this information proves helpful. Let us know what type of material that you want to see. Subscribe to keep up to date with whatever uh, someone else in the dojo might be posting. And we look forward to hearing from you soon and seeing you at one of our upcoming seminars. To find out more, look at United States Nippo Academy's Facebook. Thank you. Domo arigatou gozaimashita.